Well, that's just the, that's just the the, um, the starter. We'll let that dry and then ponder on it for a bit. The basic structures there with the drawing. And then who knows where it will go. This looks like a proper studio. <laughs> yes, I always get that coming. Everybody's every audience has been all nicely tidied up and. Uh, well, I have tied it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been at it for days. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, it's a, it's a working studio. So. Yeah. I'm working on these two now and those down there. I can kind have of about four or five on the go at the moment. Do you? Yeah. I, I, I like that. Yes. <laughs> It's everybody's favourite. It reminds you of like it's like it's like there's a like the storms coming towards you, isn't it? It's, yeah, like it's, uh, it's 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 meant to be the burren in Ireland with the, that limestone landscape on the top, and then I, I saw a storm coming over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know you won't want to be out there painting. So I've, I've been going to stones at Anston, so I'm doing these uh, beside me like well while, while I'm still alive. Yeah, when I came down here as a kid, it was uh, full of imagination and mythologies. So I know I know exactly where the um, Valley of the Shadow of Death is. It's down there. And then it's gone now, but there would be the light on that was the uh, the burning bush. And then more prosaically, it would be I would be Errol Flynn, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Uh, it was full of possibilities and an amazing place not far away from civilization. You can hear the road passing above, but uh, it, was never a, it was never thought of really. It was never a consideration, it was always a place of magic and still is. But there's so much material down here to tie up that imagination I had as a child and what I'm doing now. Yeah, I don't, I don't really do play in here. Uh, I paint in my studio. Uh, I just look and it's all up here. I was born in Parkgate, uh, which is a suburb of Rotherham. It was known as the low end, so the only way was up really. My father was a steel worker and my grandfather was a steel worker. And basically 
they had to fall out of bed and next door to them was the steelworks. But we, I went back recently and it's now um, a retail park, Park Gate, Retail World or whatever, and uh, worked out the steps to where I would have been born. And it seems I was born somewhere between Poundland and Superdrug. When I went to school, you know, um, art wasn't uh, seen to be um, a kind of peripheral subject, really. Well, I always drew from from uh, an early age. I was I was kind of copying American comics, um, and people kind of, you know, it was like a kind of par party trick. You know, people would. Relations would come around and, uh, and and look at this stuff, but I think I think the major the major effect on my life was you know I'd, I'd always drawn and then unfortunately at the age of fourteen uh, my mother died uh, unexpectedly and as an only child I was kind of cast into a very kind of strange world um, and my from from being top top of the class at school, I went to the bottom of the class very rapidly. Um, and teachers used to say to me, oh, what would your mother have thought? Um, and I said, well, she wouldn't have thought anything, she's dead. Uh, I had a rough time, I, I turned into a kind of punk before the uh, the punk years came really. Didn't wash, you know, got into trouble for, for dirty fingernails and long hair and all that kind of, kind of business um, but we were we were beaten quite badly at school in those days you know it was it was the era where you could get beaten for walking down the wrong side of the corridor at, uh, at various times and the one oasis of calm uh, within all this turmoil of my mother dying and uh, slipping down the ranking systems in the school was the art room and we had this very great teacher called uh, Terry Curran who created a little oasis of peace and encouraged me to uh, to draw and paint and he used to put on little exhibitions of my work around the school and I'd read in the Sunday Times supplement that Leeds Polytechnic Art College was the best the best art school in Europe so I thought oh I'll, I'll go there then and my tutors at uh, Rotherham Arkley said, oh, you'll never get in there. And uh, I did. <laughs> but much to my annoyance when I got there, there was hardly anybody painting. And you were left to your own devices. So, you know, tutors would say, oh, well, Picasso never went to art college, you know, just get on with it. So I've got this. I've got a photograph down there, but uh, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get uh, the essence. <laughs> uh, and, um, these are the opening shots.
This is this is Derek, my Derek Allport, my old tutor from Rotherham Art College, um, which would have been in 1970 to 71. Early 70s, and then he went on yeah. to Leeds. Leeds, Leeds Polytechnic Fine Art for me since. But Derek's Derek's a great artist. He's one of the finest draftsmen I've ever seen, really, and much underrated. And uh, one of one of my best teachers. He used to he used to. Um, paint in the studio, it, when we'd all left at night, he'd carry on with the painting. Uh, and then we'd see different stages of it every morning when we came in, and I think that was one of the best learning experiences I ever had. But, uh, but I've always, I've, you know, it, it was great to, uh, to uh, bump into Derek again. I had an exhibition in Rotherham um, when they reopened. I don't think I made the private view, did I? No, no, and everybody said, oh, Derek Allport's going to come and see it. I thought, Oh my God! I think it's rubbish. And um, he came along and liked the liked the work. And uh, from that we formed a group called Alluvium, which initially was five of us. Um, All of nine or ten years ago. Now. It must be ten, 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 ten years, years ago. Yeah. Um, and we have an annual annual exhibition in various places, including this place. Um, and it's included more people, really. We've kind of expanded from the original original five people. Been various stuff I've exhibited uh, over the years, doing the Alluvium show. And it's a good, it's a good way uh, having an out an outlet for my work on a yearly basis, really. And it kind of spurs me on to do to do new work. I use I use oil. Mainly started with acrylic and watercolour and even even kind of marker pens and things like that. But it all it, and this is this is a thing you uh, you told me was the idea of the privacy of drawing. I kind of kidded myself that the the um, the practice of art was wasn't something that was. Uh, that was uh, anything to do with socialism. It, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a proper occupation for a socialist. And so I kind of, I kind of talked myself into this idea that you know it wasn't. It wasn't something I should be doing. But I think in retrospect, it was the the fact that uh, I didn't think I was any good as an artist. So it was, uh, it was, it was self deception in a way, and thinking I want a normal life. And so I went through a process of um, of a few years of trying to settle down and not paint and get a job. I didn't know what I was going to do. I, w I worked for two years as a as a coach cleaner at National Travel, and then I got promoted to being a, an oil man. And then you know realizing that uh, I was I, I was I was always kind of cut off from it. I I could never I could never fit in with the camaraderie. I did. But there was always something, something else there. I drifted into what's known, what was known then as community development work. I got, I got a job as a youth worker on a on a job creation scheme, and that led to um, that led to me working as a community development worker for Sheffield City Council for for twenty years. I thought, well, that that's that's a fit occupation and. I'm very, still very proud of that part of my life because politically, um, I think we achieved a lot of things. And then um, I was kind of influenced by Gerald Scarf and Ralph Steadman, and I thought, "Oh, that's a way to do art that's that's meaningful. You know, it's 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 uh, it's accessible. You know, it's printed in news in newspapers, and then it's gone." So the next strategy in my art career, which if you can call it a strategy, was, because um, it happened by accident, was I had a, a picture in a pub of uh, Bob Dylan and the band, and somebody bought it. And people asked me for uh, prints of it, and it had been sold. So I started doing a series of pictures based around bands that people liked, and exhibited them around Sheffield, and made prints which were quite successful in terms of sales 
And then basically I became bored with doing them, although they were very kind of successful in terms of selling prints. But I wanted to do something more. I can't remember the exact time I started painting again, but it must have been late 80s. And it was, it was an exhibition in a pub and I'd done... I'd done loads of drawings um, and that kind of work, and then I'd done a big, biggish kind of landscape of an event in Greece where uh, this thunderstorm, I was on a balcony and this amazing thunderstorm came over and the all the birds and everything went quiet. And it was of that. And it was a centerpiece of a, an exhibition in a pub called the East House in Sheffield. and. Um, I thought, oh, you know, I'd, this is nice, getting back to painting. But the funny story about that was that uh, I, I sold quite a few little drawings from that. So that kind of boosted my confidence. And then the landlord rang me up, uh, Eddie, and said, uh, there's this um, doctor who's interested in this big painting of yours, and uh, she'll be in tomorrow night. She really likes it. And I went, I went down, and uh, Eddie said, "Oh no, uh, she's, she's left. They came, they came in last night, and with her husband, and um, he's an architect. And uh, she said, oh, this, that's the painting. It's wonderful.' And he said, uh, he said, if that painting's coming home, I'm leaving.' <laughs> and Eddie said, "Well, she did look at the painting and him twice before she made her mind up." And I've still got it. I call it, I call it the divorce painting. <laughs> I kind of drifted back into it, and then pe people um, people were encouraging. And then, and then I, I suppose the, the spur to it was being as a community worker. I started working with the uh, Sheffield Irish Forum because I have some Irish roots and. Uh, we had we had an exhibition of paintings uh, which I kind of helped to curate and that kind of got a good reception and I sold a couple of pieces. This is a painting I did five or six years ago um, which was a view of the Blasket Islands. Uh, my, my wife and I tried to get across there one day and never made it as you can see from the stormy skies. I worked, I worked as a community development worker trying to promote the Irish community in Sheffield and spent lots of time obviously in Ireland. Some of my background is from Ireland and this is a, this is a painting that I'm still very proud of and it's owned by my good friend David Granville who's always been a major supporter of my work. This is one of a number of uh, Paul's paintings that me and my wife have got uh, in our house and it's uh, one of our favourites. I found it, it's probably our, our favourite of all. And it really exemplifies what we like about Paul's work. You've got the nature, it's very strong, it's very forceful. So you've not only got the beauty of nature, but you've got the power of nature. There's a slightly almost malevolent side to it. You know, and you can see that the sea is rough and the sprays, I mean, you can virtually feel the spray on your face in this painting. And the sky is obviously, you know, in, in turmoil. Uh, and I'm not surprised that they didn't get to the island. I mean, this is a, the west coast of Ireland. Seas can be particularly rough. And they obviously didn't pick a, a particularly good day to go. This was a joint exhibition called Elements of Place with John Wilkinson at Kayak uh, Gallery. And I'd done some work with Piggle a multimedia arts group that do music and installation and they'd done a show for me before uh, and it was my nod towards the avant-garde but I remember being really impressed by the stuff I'd seen when they'd done things at Bank Street Arts Centre and I can remember saying to one of them that um, it was so exciting what they'd done I felt the same way as I did when I first did Elvis Presley playing Heartbreak Hotel and the guy looked quite perplexed at me. But I was quite interested in young people doing really exciting things and not being in a kind of commercial sphere. So 
So the the, the early stuff, I, I kind of um, went into a. I suppose it was abstract, but I started doing paintings that were about certain experiences and landscapes from from memory, but they were about the feelings of being in that place. So while people people saw them as being abstract, I saw them as being attached to the place I was represented. So some were about holidays in, you know, going to Greece or Whitby or wherever. And they'd always, they'd always be to do with a memory. I had a solo show at the workstation in Sheffield and this guy, because I, I didn't really think it was any good, and then this guy, Peter Downey from um, from Harlem University, said, oh, I'd like, I'd like you to do an exhibition for me at uh, Harlem University. And I thought, oh, all right, you know. And he liked my work, you know, and I thought, oh, this is, <laughs> this is interesting, you know, somebody who's obviously got a love of art. Um, 
and he became a bit of a mentor really and he he, he put a put a major exhibition on for me in 2002 at Hallam University and he did he did the posters and it was really professional and um and I thought, I thought, oh right, you know, this this is starting to uh, starting to work. The stuff that I do mainly for myself, and then other other people are kind of beginning to recognise it. And maybe maybe I might have something to uh, something to say, or, or or I might be better than I kind of think I am. These are. Uh pictures from what I would call my middle period at the moment they were based around the pretensions of doing stuff around apocalypse you've got this picture which is a deluge after I'd seen the deluge footage of the hurricane in New Orleans which is dear to my heart this is a picture of a glacier melting This is a picture about the deluge of Rotherham, really. You can see the cooling towers in the background, and it's when the floods will cover the land. This final painting is a painting called The Magic Mountain, and I'd like to put a quote in by Thomas Merton, who was a Trappist monk who was into Zen Buddhism. The full beauty of the mountain is not seen until you too consent to the impossible paradox. It is and is not. When nothing more needs to be said, the smoke of ideas clears, the mountain is seen. It's been a process of this, 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 this trying to convince myself that, um, that what I do is worthwhile in the face of other people who bought work from me and must like it but there's still there's still that kind of working class boy from park gate who thinks what am i doing and this is not this is not really of any worth my annoyance is that um, after all this time of prevaricating and 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 wasting time I'm finally getting the hang of it, you know, I'm finally getting the hang of how to paint. And if I had another 60 years, I, you know, I might, I might do something decent.
Oh my god. Look at you. Look at you sat there with all this crap. No. Oh, it's you again, is it? What are you doing? You've been bugging me for years. Just go away. You know, just leave me alone. I'll show you how to do it. Follow me.